What are you doing? I was trying to get a picture of a beautiful red flower. I had no idea. You caught me. You caught me in the garden. That's hilarious. So this morning, and welcome to the backyard garden with Aislinn. And of course, you got Joe back there behind the screen. And Hello. Clearly, we can't ignore the fact that my hair is a completely different color than it was one whole week ago. Uh, so that's just kind of some fun. Um, what I wanted to do today was I want to show you around the garden. I like to do a beginning of the month garden tour. Uh, I think it's good to be able to see what it looks like when you contribute to a garden all season. Who's that? Oh, there's a very, very noisy grackle up there that's yelling, wants to be on screen. So, um, last week I got started by talking to you about getting your ground ready because we'd had all that nice rain and then the week before that we had dealt with the hurricane. So now I'm getting to the first of the month August garden tour. And I'm starting down here because I want to show you that there's some really good stuff. Now, you know that, or if you watch these videos, you know that this is my oldest garden space. This garden goes all the way back to about five years ago, starting with that hula culture bed. And then most of these built beds were built after the hurricane in 2017. Uh, that was Hurricane Harvey. So this bed has had time to really develop and this is my strongest garden and this is the garden that I know what does well, what doesn't do well, what changes need to be made and things like that. So starting by looking over here, you'll see that I've got my beautiful burgundy okra. I've got three okra trees growing here. It does put off just enough okra for me to eat fresh okra. Some of it I pick right out and take inside. Some of it I use to dip in different types of hummuses and things like that. Um, and then if we get enough of it, then I can also use it to fry. However, I've been getting uh, okra from- Massive okra fry massive, last night. Yeah, huge okra fry. And uh, part of that is because we're purchasing Dagon produce baskets um, from our friend Joelle. Um, now, other things that you'll see here, of course, is this Green Harmony that you hear a lot of people are, you're seeing a lot more people purchase for our area. It is a really good edible landscape. It just covers nicely, especially in the summertime, but it is also edible and it grows well from cuttings. And if you would like some of it, I do have some of it available to, uh, to Now the other thing I have going here is a really nice tomatillo plant. So you can see how beautiful this tomatillo is. Tomatillo does like the summer heat. It does uh, need a couple of friends. So I've got other ones around so that it can open pollinate and pollinate with one another. And it should at this point be making tomatillos. And I hope that I will get some tomatillos here in the springtime. Now these plants have been going. I started those seeds back in January. So um, the ones that I planted over at uh, Community Garden at First United Methodist Church have already begun planting or producing tomatillos. So I'm not 100% sure what it is that I've done here that's keeping them from producing yet. But they're a very, very beautiful plant and they have lots of pretty flowers. And I will tell you that I finally see that I have honeybees. I'm finally starting to see some honeybees in this garden. And I think that's because I still, even at this time of year, have lots and lots of flowers. Can you see all the different flowers I have growing? So that means that as the honeybees are making their way around and everyone else's lawns are dead and all they have left growing is maybe some oleander or there's no, no flowers really around, the honeybees are looking for pollen and they're looking for sugar and they're looking for places to connect with that. And so this is a really nice space. So once they learn that I'm here, then I will have them regularly coming to help me pollinate. But what you can see here is you can see a healthy lavender plant going on right here. You can see, of course, down here on the ground, more tomatillo that's coming out, a, health, a very healthy marigold plant, beautiful, beautiful zinnias. And I've also got these little tiny baby zinnias, um, a, different, a little bit of a different variety of zinnia that makes those tiny little uh, blossoms. Over there, that big red flower is a, um, a Mexican sunflower or a red torch sunflower and it seeds really easily so I can reseed that one as well. Now let's walk back this door. Well, before we walk off, I want to show you something. We did get uh, some hose situation changed and that means that I have the ability to use a, um, a sprinkler now. 
it's really important that you're watering your gardens this time of year. Um, every time we're not getting rain, I'm watering usually every other day. Now, what I use this for is really a soak watering. This is not something you do in the evening. You have got to do this stuff in the morning times. So that way your plants have all day to dry out. And so this is just a little metal watering, uh, a waterer that you can turn up and down really low and it helps you to flood beds and it helps you um, certainly as you get into the time of year when you're going to start seeding at the top of the beds that it gets helps to get your seeds moist so that they can germinate and then check this powerful little sucker out I'm real excited about having this available um, we'll see how long it lasts but one thing I will make sure to tell you is to change these out take them off because these get stuck and stay permanently attached to the hoses, which is the reason why we hadn't purchased anything is because we had left it attached for too long. So, all right, let's come back this direction over here. You can see over here on this side, I've got some pretty okra. I've got a tomato plant that's doing really well. Um, that's actually still in a pot. I'm going to probably leave it in the pot. Um, and then I've got some more small pepper plants over here. One of the things I did want to talk about today that I'm learning is that, and let's come over here into the shade just a little bit. I'm learning that we, I deal with a lot of pathogens in this garden. Um, and some of that I've probably put in myself by the way I've grow and the way I've been growing here. And so what I started seeing was even some of my young pepper plants were getting that bacteria spot on them. And so I started doing more research about, okay, well clearly there's something that I need to deal with, especially in this older garden that's been here a while, uh, to deal with pathogens. Pathogens that affect my uh, tomato plants, my pepper plants, even some of my brassicas and things like that later on in the season. So I wanna make sure, even taking away kind of the pretty of some of my leaves on my salvia and sage, you can see that there's a little bit of, uh, it'll, it'll create uh, problems for any kind of squash, all of that. And so what I'd begun doing was looking for what are the types of soil happy microbes that can grow in the soil to help to change and shift that dynamic that's happening in the soil. And one of the ones that I found was um, Bactillus subtilis. I'm maybe saying that wrong. But when I did the research on that one, what I found was that um, there it, it was carried in a product called uh, a plant probiotic. So probiotic is something that we use for our own gut health. Well, plant probiotic is soil health and we're working on the soil health. So I did purchase a product. I did spread it around on all of my garden. I put it on any, any roots that I had showing. I put it in any pots. I definitely put it on any peppers, plants, tomato plants, eggplants, making sure to give them what they needed around their soil. And I'm gonna give it a try and take a look at that and then do some promotion of that if it shows signs of working. It's a fairly expensive product, but if it works and it shifts the dynamic of my soil, that's extremely important. And you can see what I'm talking about if you look at, let's see, I don't have, they're not as much happening over here. These seem to be pretty good. But if you look back over here, you can see that it's happening on these pepper plants right here. So I'm trying to mitigate this problem. A lot of the research you will find is there's nothing you can do about it, but I do not believe in that. I believe that there's always an opportunity to change the health of anything. And that's just a matter of the microbes and how we deal with the microbes. So what I have going on over here is some more nice, healthy, big tomatillos. And then I've got some peppers. This is a chocolate pepper, bell pepper plant. It actually did put on um, a bell pepper. I've got a pimento over there and some chives and lots of good stuff. I've got some small okra still kind of hanging out and around down there. Down there, I've got a really nice big um, Surinam cherry that's just really starting to take off. And go back this way, look how tall this eggplant is, has grown. It is all the way from there, all the way up to here, I'm starting to get an eggplant tree, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now this particular seed was planted in January of 2019. The plant was put in the bed in probably about, mm, maybe September or October of 2019 and it has produced probably three or four pretty eggplants, but this season I believe is gonna be its perfect season. I'm gonna get it through this summer. It's looking fantastic right now, and I'm gonna start putting on lots and lots of eggplants. And here's the 
you can see that there's the little baby ones, but then you can see I've got flower, flower. I've got lots of flowers going on. I've got more flowers growing here. So I'm gonna have lots of eggplants. I will put up a video about baba ganoush, which is a dish you can use to make eggplant on my YouTube channel. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can get all of the updates of any videos that I do on a weekly basis with all different types of homesteading things, lots of things going on here in the backyard. You can get all of the videos. Man, I went all the way back to like January, February and watched some of these video videos from back then and they are pretty bush league. <laughs> but uh, we're learning, we're figuring all this stuff out and it's a really nice journal and it's great information for you to have as well. So. You can see yet again, still more flowers, lots and lots of flowers. Yes, questions? A real question about the videos, because you've been doing this weekly mm -hmm. in the backyard since January. Yeah. Corona's made it easy to do. Yes. Will you really go back and, you know, in January, in the upcoming January, and look back at the January and use those to learn how you could have maybe done something differently or what was working, what wasn't? Yeah, absolutely. Is uh, it that it, useful, it I guess, is, is my journal. question? It is a journal. And that's where it started for me was journaling. It's important that you journal and whatever the best method for you, this was a good method for me and I will be able, but even whether I go back and watch through every video, one of the things that it's done is it has ingrained in me yet again, when did that happen? When did I do that? I don't remember when, oh yeah, I planted that then, oh yes. And I can flip back to a video just to double check those things and make sure, yes, that's when that happened. Yes, I put that in at that time. And so it does become very helpful to use different ways of journaling for my garden as well. So, and then you can see I've got lots of peppers growing up really big and nice over there. And, um, you know, you can see even my indigo spire um, salvia is doing really well. That'll be drawing in the, honey, the uh, honeybees right now. Of course, I've got all of this beautiful, beautiful, hello, friend. That's a, um, a red wasp. And the red wasps are not bad guys. They're good guys. Do stay away from them because they will sting and it hurts, but they're not aggressive and their job is not looking for you. Their job is looking for other types of pests that are eating things that you don't want in your garden. So this milkweed is for the monarch butterflies. I do have lots of monarch butterflies that come around, that are coming around. I saw hummingbirds. I have big, they're big hummingbirds. They're like probably about that big. I've seen a couple of those around. Now let's flip around back here and just quickly talk about what's going on over here. So week after week after week, you've seen me talking about this space and how the chickens were on it. And last week you saw that we moved that line back. And now you can see what I'm doing over here. And you can see if you look back that way, I'm covering up anything that I'm not using currently and keeping it. I am putting my waterer on it. I'm putting that over there and making sure that this area stays wet. I'm using that carbon material that I cut from my trees back there. And then I'm basically just digging up this clay soil and I'm layering the carbon material and the topsoil and putting it back up on top of there. I'm gonna put some sand, I'm gonna put some expanded shale in here, I'm gonna put some pea gravel, and I'm really just layering it up and trying to make it nice and broke down, but also lifting it up. And my goal here is to get this planted by January, which means all I'm trying to do right now is get it built and get it covered with some type of cover cropping because the goal, the long-term goal is January planting and this will be ready to plant with actual production plants in January. So you'll see this process continue as it keeps going on. I left this open because I wanted to be able to show you what I'm doing here. This is just grass clippings that we use to cover. Um, ideally, your chickens or something is getting on this, but right now I just needed some mulch soft mulch to cover the space up and here's all i'm doing i'm literally taking my nice little four prong fork spade and i'm digging this up and i'm throwing it up here on top of that that's it and i can go back through with a shovel and kind of pull that stuff i'm leaving this tree around because i don't want to move it yet i will move it in november but i don't want to move it yet so when that happens i'll go back in and dig all that up what's going to happen here is i'm going to clean out as much of this topsoil as i can clean out I'm going to throw it up on top of there and then I'm going to fill this with some of that carbon leaf material. I'm going to fill that hole and then I'm going to start, then I'm going to move further back this way and I'm going to add some topsoil on top of that. Sand, expanded shale, 
You can add manure into this. You can add more mulch into this. This is where you do that layering, that hygge culture or lasagna gardening. Those are two things you can look up to get a little bit more information. By the end of this day, this will be completely covered up because I do not want to leave this open like this. Yes. So, um, all right, I want to go back over here to the old garden. something I can't think of, mandarin. Mandarin orange is the word I'm looking for. So I cut back some of these sunflowers that were overgrowing. I've got a cantaloupe vine that's growing up through over here. And then look, if you come around here, I'm hiding a little secret over here. Look down there. Yay for cantaloupes. Now I just gotta keep the possums and critters away from it. So I'm watching it daily, turning it, I'm picking it up because I want to make sure that I'm not getting um, things that are eating up the bottom of it and that it's not too more like not too wet down here and I'm keeping a nice little dry space for it to set but I'm also kind of keeping it hidden because I don't want the other creatures to figure out it's ripe before I figure out it's ripe and you don't the way that you figure out it's ripe is when it comes loose from the vine that's really the goal especially with cantaloupe so it's a game between you and the possum who finds it first and I'm gonna find it first <laughs> All right, so I've got um, different kinds of tomatoes. I had a real nice tomato vine over here. I'm working on the same kind of situation here where I've got a pot growing and then I'm putting other plants and basil around it. And you can see I actually have flowers on these. Now, whether these flowers will set anything is probably unlikely because it's too hot, but that means that the plant is healthy. And when the temperatures go down in September, this plant will begin to put tomatoes on for me, right? Okay. Coming back over here, I finally, finally got one winter squash to take off in this garden. I'm so happy about it and I'm keeping it up off the ground and putting it up here. I noticed last year that this is exactly where I grew my pumpkins at. It, they grew up on the side of the chicken pen and up over the top. And then I had to go and remove the pumpkins from the aviary netting on the top, but I'm gonna give that a try and see. I do not know what kind this is these silver leaves, so I'm not 100% sure. I'm guessing it's probably an acorn squash because I planted a lot of acorn squash. So you can see my pretty okra that's coming up over here. That's all that burgundy okra, real pretty okra. And then I've got black eyed peas. These, a lot of this stuff has aphids on it, but I've noticed a swarm of ladybugs. So I'm not panicking too much. I'm just cutting out what I need to cut out to clean it up keep it clean but otherwise I want this stuff to stay covered as much as possible with as much green as possible because this is where I'm going to do a lot of planting here in September uh, you can see my beautiful pretty 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 okra these okra leaves are just such a pretty variety this there's a there's a hill country red and then a burgundy that both make these pretty pretty leaves and then of course you've got this beautiful zinnia that's coming up in here too and this one will have another bud on it before too long so going back that direction, oh, this is nice. This is just a, um, a weed that I let grow here, but it's a really nice ground cover. And look at that moisture that it's keeping under the soil there. But then also when I walk around back here in my bare feet, this is much nicer to walk on than this is. So these are the kinds of things you wanna try to let grow in your garden. It's okay if those types of things grow in your garden. I've got some more tomatoes that I've got put in there and I'm working on trying to see if I can get them taken up to take off. I've got some peppers that are doing okay as long as I can keep their roots covered. They may, you know, eventually take off. Back in here in the back, of course, I've got the okra, but I've also got some roselle coming up back here. And so really whatever makes it is what I want. That's all I'm looking for is just what is going to make it in this garden and keep the ground covered, right? Over here, you can see I've got an eggplant. I'm hopeful that'll take off eventually. I've got a pepper. This pepper is doing good. It's being gnawed on a little bit, but that's okay because right here in the center, this stuff's coming up looking really nice. I got this stuff cleaned out and took a lot of stuff out of here. I need to get the roots covered on this tomato plant. I'm hopeful that that tomato plant will... Look at my monarch right there. Well, hello there, friend. Lovely, lovely lady or boy, whatever. You can be beautiful. 
Here's a roselle plant that's gonna grow really big and nice in this area over here. And I've got a lot of, I've actually got a lot of plants here. They're just small, currently staying small and eventually they will take off and all this area will be grown up nice and bushy again. Now you can see that this all got cleaned back because a lot of that cucumber was that bitter cucumber that I didn't really want. I've used a little bit of it, but it's been okay. And I cut it, I went ahead and cut it off because it wasn't pretty and clean anymore. So yeah. A, a week or so before Hannah, we trimmed up this tree and yes. exposed more sunlight in this garden. Have you noticed a difference since we've done that? Yes, absolutely. And I will also <laughs> tell you that, um, the shade, the dapple shading is essential in the heat of the summer. And so this pl these plants are staying alive back here because they have shade. And then over under my pecan tree, those plants are doing well because they've got some dapple shading and they've got, what you're really looking for is that you want the morning sun and the afternoon shade. You want six to eight hours of dappled sun. That's what you're looking for in the heat of the summer because it's just too hot, but your plants stay alive. And that's what I'm looking for is keeping my plants alive. Here I've got another roselle that's really gonna take off and be huge, a big bush over here. Now this is some more of that detura. I don't know if you noticed back in the other garden, but I have the moonflower, the big white moonflower that opens up at night. That's a lot of what this is, and this reseeds itself really easily because I've got it here, and then I've got it here, and then I've got it here, and I have it over there, and it came up in my fire pit. And so that plant grows really easily, and it's a nice plant to have around. The one caveat is that it is poisonous. So it can't go to your chickens, see, you know, any of that stuff. When you cut that plant out, it needs to go into a pile like this. It's not gonna go to your animals. No livestock needs to be eating on Datura, D-A-T-U-R-A. It's related to belladonna and it's got a night flower on it. So, Meet you good. at the moon flower. Meet you at the moon. You love to say that, don't you? Okay, so I'm trying really hard to get this stuff to take off. This is my time. It's not loving this space over here. The stevia is a couple of years old and it does okay. I'm gonna keep working at that. The Cuban oregano will do fine once, the, um, once it finally takes off, but it's a new, new stuck in the ground plant. This pepper plant's doing pretty good. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how this garden, again, planted in January, fast forwarded it faster than I should have. Was thinking, oh, tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, all of it gonna grow. It wasn't ready yet. So this is what I got out of it this season and this is perfectly fine. And that's what you're gonna see in that other garden over there is you're gonna see uh, that I'm really waiting until January to turn it into a production garden. Meanwhile, this one is getting to the point now where I can begin to get it into a production space. So you can see back there on the back, I have a Turk's cap, um, a volunteer Turk's cap that came up back there. That's gonna grow big and bushy and take over. And uh, I need to get some of that, um, grass just cleaned out of the the area back there but that's no big deal i've got another really nice tomato plant that came out of the pot here and is growing up on this fence line here so i'm leaving it to do its thing and then i've got along this fence line i'm trying to make sure everything has as much shade as it needs right now because that little spot right there gets sun all day long and so I've been moving some of them over here to where they get a little bit more. And if you can see, I mean, they really just are doing better. This uh, eggplant is just getting big and happy and I'm gonna move it soon. Peppers are gonna go in very soon. I have a greenhouse out at the farm now. So some of these things are gonna get moved to the farm, to the greenhouse over there. And look how pretty this tomato plant is doing over here. It's just really gonna take off and be a huge, I mean, it's got flowers on it. Again, those flowers probably won't set, but that it has flowers on it means it's healthy enough to try to make babies. All right, so um, I'm gonna put some more soil. You can see I need to put some more topsoil up here. I need to put some more. There was topsoil originally covering that? Yes. It's kind of washed away? Yes, and, it, and it's come down over here. You know, this was all, this is all here now that wasn't there before. Here's some more of that Datura. You can see I've got black eyed peas coming on on this side. You can see green harmony that's growing over there too, taking over this bed. So the goal is to just cover the soil, cover the soil as much as I can. Um, I've got tomatoes in the fence line over here that I'm working on trying to keep alive and happy. The, the ones that are in the shade are actually happier than the ones that are in the direct sun. If you look at the basil, you can tell that because even the basil that needs to be clipped out you know, make sure you're clipping your basil if you want it to continue to stay big and grow. 
and you can make all kinds of pestos. I made a basil hummus that's really delicious and I'm going to post a video on YouTube about that. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can see I'm cutting off all of the tops of these little basil here. But you can see how healthy this basil is as you keep going. It's just a really nice, healthy plant. It smells nice too. Oh yeah, definitely. And I've got some more basil inside. So this basil is going into a recipe very soon. Probably the pesto because you bought some stuff for me to make pesto. Yeah, we did those caprese burgers recently. Yes, lots of basil this time of year. But you can see how it gets over here and it's, ah, now it's starting to get a little dried out looking. It's not as happy in this direct sun over here. Hmm. And so these You're are right. things I'm dealing with. Sh so. Shade. Yep. Full sun. Yep. Is that, can you water it more to get it a little boost? No, because those have had the exact same water as these. I mean, I could water it more, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So um, I'm going to cut this off and put it in a flower, in a vase, a flower vase inside because it's already got some flowers on it. Um, really, what I, one of the things I did was I put some of that um, plant probiotic in some of these pots. Maybe this, that will help save some of these tomato plants. Likely it won't. What I'll end up having is nice pots with some pretty basil in them that I'll set around the healthy, happy tomato plants that are growing. Um, I am getting tomato starts. I have seeds that are germinating, um, currently germinating. Uh, well, at the end of this week, I will not be germinating any more pepper, tomato, or eggplant, but I will continue to keep successionally germinating cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and then late September, I start putting stuff in the ground. And then in October, I start planting my root vegetables and uh, start planting the softer greens and lettuce and things like that in November, moving trees in November. I have a class on August the 15th. That's next Saturday. Uh, there's some options for in person in my backyard. There's a couple of those available. And then of course it's open online for Zoom. Anyone can, and you'll get a recorded version of that if you pay for that class, where I'll do really, really in depth what I'm doing in August and all that I'm doing to prepare for that. Of course, Dinner Table Talks launches episode 49 tomorrow morning. We've been seeing a lot of growth on our podcast, so we're real excited about that. We've actually started doing a Saturday night at the Dinner Table Live, which is kind of fun. All of these plus Lots of other things that I'm doing about homesteading and about cooking different types of things that you can grow seasonally in your backyard. I'm doing all of those over on my Aislinn Campbell YouTube channel and I hope you will subscribe and check that out. If you need any more information from me, drop your questions in the links, drop your questions in the comments here and I'll do everything I can to get back and answer your questions. And I look forward to talking to you all throughout the week and seeing you on Sunday, next Sunday. Have a great week. Happy gardening.